On today's episode of Locked On Avalanche, the thing that Absan has been asking for for the past five years is finally here. Altitude introduces a streaming app for all of your Avalanche needs. Is it enough to satisfy what has been missing for so long? Let's talk about it. New episode of Locked On Avalanche coming at you. Your Locked On Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Locked On Avalanche podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Chris Maselli. With me, as always, is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Uh, UBI and all for Mr. Sullivan. Thank you for tuning in, making this your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. Make sure you're following us on our social media outlets, LOP and underscore Avalanche on Twitter, X, Locked on Avalanche on Instagram and Threads. You got it? You okay? Uh, questions, comments, concerns, and opinions, Locked on Avalanche at gmail.com. And follow us on our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe, get notified when a new show goes live. And make sure you're subscribed to our subtext as well. Link to that's in the show notes below. And when you do, you chat with Kyle and I one-on-one. We get your opinion, everything Avalanche related, which we share on this very podcast. I, I joke, but uh, you, you are in a, a bit of pain. So it, a lot. going okay. <laughs> a, yeah. lot, a lot of pain. I have uh, sprained my shoulder to the nth degree. Um, being old is not fun. I mean, you, you you shouldn't really be spraining your shoulder before there's any avalanche hockey games because you're not like, you know, punching the air when, you know, they, they score a goal or something like that. So I was, how did this come about? What's going I, on? I was literally getting, it's finals week. I'm finishing up finals week in school for some classes and I was getting a case of energy drinks off the shelf at the store. That'll do it. And my kids have not let me live this down. Did they, did it crash? And, oh, no. and uh, okay, I put it in the did cart it? and realized I've done something terribly wrong. Oh boy! All right. Uh, well, you're day to day, so uh, but you are here today, so that's a good thing because something very significant happened, Kyle, <laughs> uh, involving the Colorado Avalanche. I had to get uh, hurt so the Avalanche can run. Exactly. Uh, so we we found well, I, I think it was yeah Wednesday night. The altitude tweeted. Uh, wasn't very cryptic. I think we kind of all saw this coming. It was just like, get to the announcement already. Um, and Wednesday night, they said, uh, you know, first thing in the morning, there's, there's, they have their alarm set. And people were like, yeah, we really hope this is it. Like, really hope this is some sort of streaming service. And that's exactly what you got. You got more than that, actually, more than just the streaming service. So pretty much what everything is, um, is, you know, that, that you are going to get, well, it, it, you'd have to download the app, obviously, um, altitude plus that comes in at 1990, $19.99 a month that gets you all the avalanche games, all the nuggets games, gets you Colorado state, uh, Denver university, air force, all those collegiate games. Um, it gets you the out, al- basically the altitude channel, mm-hmm. um, for, for $19.99 a month streaming. Um, does not include like the games that go on TNT and ESPN altitude doesn't have rights to those, but you have access. If you have ESPN or TNT, you don't need the app because you can just tune in television to watch that. Um, you, they are also, they partnered with Tegna. Hey, business daddy. That's uh <laughs> that's us. Um, they partner with Tegna to give 20 avalanche games and 20 nuggets games free over the air. All you do is tune into nine news and you can watch those games. So that's 20 games. Like if you don't want to get the app, you'll get 20 games plus whatever is on ESPN or TNT. So it's still a good chunk of games that you can get if you don't want to spend money monthly for the app. Um, This is what people have been waiting for. Like Avalanche fans, you know, know what's been going on between the Avalanche and Comcast for five years now. This is the longest stalemate I think I've ever seen between two companies when it comes to cable and fans that live in Colorado have been shut out from if if you have Comcast. There are other methods that you can get with direct TV and Fubo TV. Um, There's ways to get it. And this is just another one. And this is I think this is the biggest one that people have been waiting for because streaming is it's not the future. It is the present. It's It's what it is now. So. Um, you saw other teams doing this. 
Uh, just your general thoughts on it, and then we'll we'll break it all down. No, uh, nineteen ninety nine a month. This is less than what it would be to park at Ball Arena. This is less <laughs> than what it is to get into Ball Arena and to buy a hot dog at Ball Arena. But no, it's it's <laughs> Not about that one. But yeah, you you have what you have not had access to since 2019 before COVID was a thing, bubble hockey, um, the rise of kale McCarr. You finally get to see on your TV locally in the Denver area like this. If you have access to altitude, even if like this back and forth between Comcast, if you had options to get altitude, you now have access to altitude plus $20 a month. I know everybody's kind of like, wow, why do I have to spend $20 a month? No, this is really a fantastic option where you're, yeah. you could like, I know there was a lot of fans that went to Fubo just for avalanche coverage. This is mm-hmm. Fubo TV. This is, yeah. this is, this is what you want as an avalanche fan. And if that's a problem, you have 20 games on television. This is, it's perfect. And when we were talking about that preseason game, like I was kind of mentioning, like, I, I told you off the air, it felt like a dry run, like they're trying to test out the streaming. Mm-hmm. And here we are, Altitude Plus. You now have Avalanche games if you're in the Denver area. Congratulations, the war is over. <laughs> yeah, I, I know Like a lot of people were, were talking about what they wanted in a, in a, a streaming app for the Avalanche and, and, and the Nuggets and all that. Um, and then you were, you were start, you're starting to get teams give it for free. <laughs> Your, your Dallas Stars, your Anaheim Ducks. And when that happens, you know, when something's given for free, uh, that's immediately what everybody wants. And I get that. I totally understand that. Uh, sports are difficult to make free. I, I really don't know how long uh, Dallas and Anaheim can do it for. If they can do it for forever, good for them. Um, but, you know, you, you people are wondering, like, oh, well, you know, this costs more than Netflix. I don't want to go into a whole like you know a business thing with Netflix, but Netflix runs their business in debt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't want to look at Netflix and say that's how I want to run my business because Netflix is billions of dollars in debt. That's how they run their business. They will always be in debt, and and they have millions and millions of subscribers. Altitude Plus is not going to have that. They're not going to have as many subscribers as something like Netflix will. So you have to charge kind of a premium for it to make money off the thing. And they're a business. I know people want to say like, oh, you know, they should give it to us for free. Like, I would love that. Would I would I love to see it free? Would I love to see it even cheaper than $19.99? Would love it. But I get it why it's not because it's a, it's a, a finite market. This is not something that's nationwide. This is regional. So you got to charge something for it. And what are the Avalanche worth to you? Are the Avalanche worth $20 a month to you? Like if, if they're not, don't get it. If they are, if you live and breathe Colorado Avalanche hockey or Denver Nuggets basketball, I don't think $20 is that because you're getting, you're getting 82. Well, not 82 with, with, you know, ESPN and stuff like that. You're getting a ton of games. You're getting all this content for twenty dollars a month. I don't think is is the worst thing in the world. And you know, I'll I'll just say it this way: um, the Ducks and the Stars they're putting it out, and those are also like California and Texas. That's technology hotbeds. Uh, they're kind of putting forth their app as a proof of concept. That's what that pitch is, and it's why it's free. Um, why it's not free here is because you're carrying altitude. This is not the avalanche putting this out. This is you're carrying altitude. Yeah, I mean it's owned by Cronky. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's all owned by the same. So guy, you're you're I, yeah. you're carrying the altitude network, and you're paying. And for everybody that's saying with the Comcast war that's going on, how unfair this is. This should be something you support because this is. Be glad you have altitude. And this isn't lumped into one of those regional networks where they kind of care about your team. Like everybody at altitude cares about the nuggets. They care right. about the Avs, and you're getting the light. Like you're getting all altitude content. You're getting mm. the Bednar interviews, the three sixties, like it's all going to be there. So you have access to all of that. So this should be something to easily, you can, it's less than if you're budgeting for Fubo 
and it's maybe two trips to go get your coffee. Just omit yeah. those, and there you go. Right. You have your Avalanche games, and if you haven't been watching or resorting to alternate methods, this is your way to support your Avs and watch your Avs for honestly not that bad because everybody who says Netflix is cheaper, give it another year. They'll probably be neck and neck. They just keep raising their price. Yeah, no, and, and it's a good deal for Netflix. Like the content that they have for that price is, is great, but they're, they're, they're able to uh, offer that around the globe. Mm -hmm. so they can keep their prices a little bit lower you can't do that like sports are expensive sports are, are, are is an expensive thing to produce and you have you know uh the talent that you have to pay on air um there's obviously advertisers like it, it's expense is an expensive product um so for for 20 hey msg plus is 30 dollars a month yeah 30 bucks a month or and they do something that's completely ridiculous uh they they offer if you wanted to buy a game and it's 10 bucks per game i i don't know how many people are actually using that but um could it be worse yeah could it be better sure i want to sit here and say this is the, the the best price line and and you know nobody should be complaining about this but it's another method now for you to watch avalanche hockey which so many people have been shut out from it for so long that didn't want to go the direct TV route or the FUBU route because FUBU is expensive. I think it's like 75, 80 bucks a month now. And a lot of people were just getting it, like you said, for just altitude. I mean, you can use it for your cable service too. Um, but if you want to remove that, if you just use FUBU TV for, for the avalanche, you can get rid of that and you're saving yourself 50, 60 bucks a month now. So it's, it's, it's a good vehicle. Streaming is where everything is now. And I know people are saying like, why did this take so long? I don't have the answer to that, but I'm sure they were not. I'm sure they were hoping for a, a resolution with Comcast for the first couple of years. So this wasn't even on the table for the first couple of years because they wanted to get that situated. Um, and these things are technical mm -hmm. and, and, you know, build, building an app and, and, and having the technology where stream. Hey, it's funny. Tony from uh, Locked On Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, they have a streaming app and he says it's terrible and it's it's i think there's a free version of that too mm. so uh maybe you pay for what you get <laughs> so uh, i like you you i i think it's a a, a good service like i said and uh, just to, to last thought on this is just how things take so long um i don't know if i'm spoiling anything here but locked on has been working on an app for the better part of two years and we were told it might come out by the end of this year, but we haven't really heard anything on it. Like it's, it's detailed. It's mm -hmm. very involved. Just the, the building of the app, add in the whole broadcast side of things. And it's not just snap the fingers and you, you know, these things just appear. So it took a few years to do and it's here. And I think it's, it's awesome that avalanche fans in that area, if you haven't been able to watch them for however many years, you now have another option to do so. I think it's great. And if I'm not mistaken, Chris, to go jump back in the time machine with me, when this Comcast mm -hmm. alt uh, Altitude War went on, we were all paying for, in 2019 for NHL Game Center. Mm -hmm. Does everybody remember that service? And that was like $30 a month, $40 a month. It was like $270 for the year. I don't think you could buy it monthly. Yeah, I it, thought you had to buy the entire year. I think I, towards the end it tried to break it down, but I would. Yeah. It was always a yearly purchase. But yeah, like how far we've come from watching the guys like scrape the ice. Your commercial breaks in progress. You're yeah, watching them scrape. The, oh, loved those it. were the days. But this is how far we've come, and now you get not just your out. You get Avalanche, and then you get the behind the scenes, and then you get the support. The rest of the sports in Denver, you get like this is this is what you want this is a great option mm -hmm. been waiting for it for a while so um it's glad that that it's here for the people in the denver area and you can you can get back to watching your avalanche and nuggets so if you want to spend 20 bucks a month which we don't think is that terrible um all right so and, and by the way it will be it's not available as of us recording this um, they said the app is going to be available early October, which is obviously right around the corner. 
and yes on android apple and then they said and this is the big one man like they said the uh smart tv service will be available soon that soon better be before the end of october like you know like you and that just shows you how these things take some time because they, I'm sure they wanted all of this done before this even season even started. They're announcing it so close to the season starting, um, and they still don't have the the smart TV app set up ready to go. It will be, and then it'll be a thing of the past. But that is the big one that people are going to be like, if I'm paying twenty dollars, I want to watch it on my television. Can you cast it? Probably. Uh, we don't know. We'll have to see. Yeah, and that that just screams regulatory and legal. It's it's a lot to get your app on these Apple stores and these yeah. Google Play stores, and especially smart TVs because they try and weed out a lot of these the content that doesn't belong on these. So this is just on their end. They're just they have it already. They just want it to get approved and roll out. So that's the initial date they're given. So just be patient. Altitude's got their stuff all ready to go they're just waiting on it to get approved all right so uh what do you think yeah ha- i know the price point might be a sticking point for some people but um and this is just the beginning they're just going to keep adding to it hopefully and and make that dollar amount be even better than what you're getting at launch uh-huh. so uh fire away in the comments section all right we're going to get our first break in and when we come back uh game two of the preseason for the avalanches friday night against the same opponent just in their barn What are we expecting from this game? Let's talk about that coming up next. First, let's hear from Indeed because we're driven by the search for better. And when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Because if you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work and use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't uh, just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree that Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of Locked On Avalanche will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash Locked On. Just go to Indeed.com slash Locked On right now and support Locked On Avalanche by saying you heard about Indeed on this very show. Indeed.com slash Locked On. Terms and conditions apply. If you need to hire, then you need Indeed. Also, Brought to you by Game Time and the Game Time app. Game Time has a brand new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff so you to show you only incredible deals and on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. What are some of the things that we love about the Game Time app? Of course, the Game Time Picks that we just mentioned, the all-in pricing when you toggle this feature on. It shows a total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. And with the seat view, you get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. Their lowest price guaranteed or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time and download game time app, create an account and use the code locked on NHL for $20 off of your first purchase terms apply. So again, create an account and redeem the code locked on NHL for $20 off download game time today what time is it kyle it's game time <laughs> all right so preseason game two seems like game one was so long ago yeah remember, no. remember that on four days ago five days ago <laughs> um yeah so same opponent in in their city this time in dallas uh not sure obviously what well maybe by the time you're listening to this on friday we we will know what the roster will look like um i would think you'll get a good uh batch of you know healthy batch of prospects yet again and maybe you'll get a few of your everyday players when when that will start to happen i i don't know every team is different how they want to go about their preseason but even if you do even if you do get Kill McCarr playing in this game. Um, I, I, I'm 
I use preseason to watch what we were watching in game one and those prospects, the ones that looked good. Do they continue to look good? The ones that maybe want to make a better impression. Do they get that opportunity in game two? What are you kind of expecting here? Yeah, that's, that's it. Exactly. Everybody that we were talking about and highlighting in game one. Now what? Um, especially yeah. like foodie, like what do you do now? Where is the trajectory going? Like, are you going to step up, fire it up a little bit? And I'd like to see a little bit more cohesion. You're on the road. What are you guys going to do? Like you're in Dallas's barn. Like it, Dallas was the team that knocked you out last year. So of course they're going to be rowdy. It's preseason. Mm. The tickets are usually cheaper. So you get mm. a lot of fans that honestly don't have the opportunity to go watch regular season games. So this is big for them. So yeah, I, I, I would like to see the Avs kind of like step it up a little bit. Of course, I'm going to keep my eyes on the goalie like what they do and how they split that time. But mm -hmm. I want to see what they build on from game one. You had um, through practice, they, they throw their practice groups up every day. Um, and you, you got some movement from the, the first week or the, the practices leading up to game one um, and in between game one and, and game two, there were differences in the groups and the lines. Um, so we'll see what, what he puts together. Um, he like, I feel like I'm starting to feel bad for Casey Middlestat mm. because he does like he hit his line. Remember how it was like, Hey, we need a two C. Well, now it's, we got the two C and now we don't know what the wingers are. Yeah. And, and that is the big question. And it's been that way in practice. The last, this is Thursday's practice. Uh, he was flanked by Kivi Ranta and Callum Ritchie. So we pulled Ritchie off of that, that youth line, that kid line. Um, and now he's practicing on the second line with Casey Middlestat. And that's a, the second line of, of your, your everyday players that where um, Callum Ritchie is. So I, I, I'm kind of feeling bad for Callum or excuse me, for, for Casey Middlestat to be like, Hey, here's a, uh, here's the position that we, we uh, couldn't get, solidified for a couple years uh and the guys that are playing with you that's the part that we don't have solidified anymore and, and honestly i kind of feel the flip i feel like they're trying to give casey middlestead his own jonathan drew in um somebody hmm. that you could they find some magic with like really work well together and middlestead it feels like he has kind of a say in this like who do you like up there who do you and the, honestly what we were just saying about who's stepping up this is a great opportunity for Richie and Kibiron to, to step it up. Like, hey, we're giving you second line minutes. Mm -hmm. Let's see how you work with Middlestead and like listen to how he wants to maneuver that line. This is a good opportunity for everybody to step up instead of just saying, okay, we're going by experience and who's been here longer. I know like Leckie's out with still hurt with a shoulder. Mm -hmm. So this gives an opportunity for guys to step up. Sure. So it's it's yeah. it's it's yeah. a good opportunity for them to seize. And I feel like middle sets kind of driving this. Like, who do you want to carry into this season? Yeah. It's just weird to put Kivy Ronta up there because you know he's not a second line guy. Yes. You know I mean, like, <laughs> not, I mean, ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you, and then, you know, you look at the the group. Well, they're listed as group one. Um, Kovalenko was on the top line of, of group one. Now, the top line of group. Group one is Kovalenko, Parker Kelly, and Chris Wagner. So, you know what I mean? It's, it's, not, it's not a top line. All I'm saying is like, why not bring Kovalenko up there? Because I feel like he would be a little bit more uh, right for that role over Kiviranta. Unless that's coming off of the game one performance. For Kovalenko? Yeah. I think he was so bad that you're going to, you know, now bury him. Like, no, he's a guy that you, you got to get up there, get up, give him some minutes. Let him play with Casey Middlestat. Let him play in a second line and see what he can do there. Because that's kind of the expectation for him. And the expectation is a middle six guy. Yeah, they're giving him top line minutes. So you're you're out there churning. You're driving. Yeah. So they're giving him the keys. Um Devon Taves had an interesting comment. I don't have it in front of me, but but paraphrasing, more or less went to Jared Bednar and said, like, put me with new guys or young guys for practice. Almost as if to say, like, I don't need to practice with Kale. Like we, we know. We we finish each other each other's sandwiches. You know what I mean? Like we don't we don't need to go there. So put me with the other guys. Let me, you know, get the camaraderie I have with Kale. Let me do this with some of these new guys. 
Um, and he's been doing that even in this practice. Brandstrom has been with McCarr and Taves has been with Shillington. Um, and then your other group pairing is uh, Gerard and, and Manson, which, you know, they play with each other often. So I like that. And, and Taves said, you know, sometimes the, the players are, especially new guys, are afraid to go to coaching staff. Um, so he wants to be that vehicle to be like, come work with me. I'll, I'll teach you the ropes. So, uh, we talked often about who should get this captaincy if, if, uh, you know, Gabe Landeskog was never in the picture. That's something that, you know, a, a captain does take these new people, whether they're prospects or just new guys coming in, come with me, newbie. I'll show you the ropes. This is why every time the conversation comes up about, what should we do with the captain C? Literally, captain C and C. But <laughs> li- it's this is why I always throw Taser's name in there because mm. of these moments. He has this. This has been. This is just like the most recent. But he does this often, where he goes and does the additional legwork and does the leadership work, not for the soundbite, but just because he wants this team better and he wants to use his experience and what he's learned to help his team out. And this is why I always bring it up. And I'm glad this is getting shared around because this guy is a leader and a lunchbox guy and does not want the spotlight. He just wants to win. Yeah. Yeah. So it was cool to see that. So we'll see how this goes. Um, goal. We I have no idea. You know, it, it's tough. It's tough to know, but you will get, like I said, <clears throat> your uh, a, a good bunch of prospects, which is that's what I get excited to see in the preseason. So we'll see how they do in uh, game two and then uh, talk about that on Monday's episode. One more thing we're going to do. We'll get a break in and talk about, let's talk about the playoffs. Season hasn't even started and let's talk about the playoffs. Yeah, why not? Uh, But we'll do teams that missed last year. that could turn things around and make it for this year. Who do we think those teams are? We'll talk about that next. All right, let's hear from FanDuel NFL fans. You can start the season with a big return over at FanDuel, which is America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. And you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets. That's guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet over at America's number one sports book, that is FanDuel.com. All right, so uh, opening day right around the corner, and everybody, it's like it's like a new baseball season. Like everybody's ha- has those aspirations, and we this this will be the year we turn things around. Uh, at some point during the season, maybe reality kicks in for some of these teams, but there's always that one or two team that bucks that trend and and makes a good push and maybe it could be twofold it could be you didn't see this coming at all or they've done this too many times where now this is the season like you're expecting them to go into the season and be that team that does turn it around who could it be and we're not just doing the the centralist is east west doesn't matter all the teams that uh missed out the playoffs last year uh, who do you feel could be a, a you know a punch their ticket for the season? I am so glad we get to do this. Uh, let me let me go ahead and just get it out of the way. Hmm. This is pumped and primed time for the New Jersey Devils to to make some okay. noise. Not just make the playoffs, but pave a way through the playoffs. Talk about improvements just from the top down, like brand new head coach. Brand new attitude, just the ascension of Jack Hughes and really solidifying himself as a superstar. Um, I feel like this team, they have solid goaltending. The New Jersey Devils are looking to make a statement, not just make their way into the playoffs, but plow a way through. The funny thing about the the Devils, like I haven't looked at the standings from last year in a while, but um, they, they were... Second to last in the metro in the metro division, they fell apart last year. Yeah, like I mean, I knew they did, and, and but I, I, I forgot about that. I forgot that's where they finished. Yeah, it was a. I it was they a were higher point. than that. Um, I think that's that's kind of like 
a lot of people's like sexy pick right now. You, you got a new head coach. You have talent on that team. I kind of feel like I'm not, I don't want to say it's like a cop out, but it, it, that, 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 that's kind of an easy pick for a lot of people to say, like, yeah, they are a playoff team. They just couldn't put it together last year. And, you know, like you said, just fell apart, could not put anything back together. Um, yeah, I think that that would be one of them. For me, I mean, you look at these divisions. Um, if you're looking at like the, the Atlantic, the teams that missed out, the Red Wings, Sabres, Senators, and Canadians. And with the exception of the Canadians, let, let's say that the Red Wings, the Sabres, and the Senators were doing the same thing year after year with these mm -hmm. teams of like, this is their year. Are one of those teams going to stand up this year and, and grab a, a playoff spot? Are one of them going to do it? Is it going to be the Red Wings who have been rebuilding for about two decades now, it seems like? Is it going to be the Sabres who the same thing with them? Is it going to be the Senators, the same thing with them? Canadians are still you know, in, in retool mode, but they'll be a better team, but they're not going to push for a playoff spot. The other three have been saying the same thing forever. Is one of them going to do it this year? I Honestly, out of all of them, you would want to say the Red Wings, but it might be the Sabres. Um and it could be the Senators, too. Like, all three of them really should be pushing this year for it. I could see all, any three of them actually making it. I really do. But none none of those teams are really – they don't really scare you. So. No. No. I mean, I think they're they're pushing for, like, a wild card spot. But yeah. um, in, the, in the Metro, it's the Penguins, Flyers, Devils, and Blue Jackets – I think really the Devils are really the only team that are, are going to put maybe the Penguins could hang around there till like the end of the year. And it, one of those things where it's like the last game of the season, uh, they need to win and get in or something. But I think the Penguins will hang around, but I think it's definitely the Devils. Yeah, it's the Devils and probably Ty Pittsburgh and Philly because mm -hmm. Philly's starting to believe in what they have. So they might be a scrappy team that just kind of like lumbers their way in, but uh, don't count out the Flyers. No, well, I mean, Tortorella will get the best mm. out, out of them that he can, but um, I, I think they'll kind of be similar. I think they'll just kind of fade. Uh, in the Pacific, you had the Flames, the Kraken, the Ducks, and the Sharks. I don't think any of that changes. I don't think the Flames can turn around. Like, uh, no, I don't see that happening. I, I think that division is already set. Yep. I think, you, you know, they got the Canucks, the Oilers, the Kings, and Golden Knights. Um, do you know what the, the goal differential was for the Sharks last year? Hmm. Triple digits? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, 150. Minus 150. Mm. That is brutal. You scored 181 goals. You gave up 331. That is brutal. I can only get better from here. That is brutal. Um, And then in, in the Central, you had the Blues, Wild Coyotes, and the Blackhawks. I'm going to say it now, man. You know where I'm going with this. I think Utah's a playoff team this year. I do. I don't. I don't think. Uh, I think your your top three are the Avs, the Stars, and the Preds. I think Winnipeg falls out. I just don't feel like they they have. I mean, you have a goalie that'll get you. That'll win you some games. Um, you have okay offense and you have okay defense. Where Utah Utah upgraded on defense. Utah has a good defensive unit, really good defensive unit. They can get, you know average better than average goaltending and you have some offense on that team too i think utah is gonna make a push this year and and be a playoff team if you ask me yeah you know the more things are going i might start buying into this utah makes a push i could tell you the coyotes are not making the playoffs but utah has a chance um and you know with um the krill the thrill rumors about wanting to go to chicago mm -hmm. they would have been What's that all about? Yeah, with my, they would have been my pick just to not say Utah, but that has to be a weird locker room right now. Yeah, and so I, I just don't foresee Minnesota doing anything. No, it'd no, be I Utah. Like yeah, I think so. In the West, I'll say Utah. In the East, uh it, it's one of those three teams: Red Wings, Sabers, and Senators. Why not? Let's go Senators. Let's say Sens going. So those are my two teams that are, that are going to flip the script for this year. And I'll take, I guess I'll take Devils and I'll I'll join you on Utah. Okay. All right. Uh, over on subtext quickly, uh, we had some people chime in on this. Uh, K, the Devils had bad luck last season and we're still close. Markstrom joining the goalie tandem may get them in. Um, McKinnon 29 
says, I would say the Red Wings or St. Louis. I don't think St. Louis is there. I, I, I don't I don't feel like St. Louis is good enough over the course of a season to to break through a playoff spot. St. Louis is the Flyers of the West. Yeah, I think that's a good comparison. Yeah, they're, they're a, a solid team, a good team, but are they good enough? I don't think so. No. Uh, Katie says the Penguins. Uh, and my heart so badly wants to say the saber, see the sabers uh, break the curse. I do too. So uh, she's got penguins and the sabers. And then uh, Vargar says Ottawa, <laughs> Ottawa, Buffalo, and Detroit. <laughs> the mm. three things, we, three teams we were just talking about. Um, and then he says Utah will finish above Nashville. Whoa, Vargar. Whoa. Love you, buddy, but I don't know about that one. And I and you heard me just go on about Utah. I don't know if they can overtake Nashville. There's too much talent in Nashville. Fargar, my friend, my brother. That's gonna <laughs> I'm gonna think about that one for quite some time. Right? <laughs> How that could possibly work. I Ooh, mean boy. That would be a, a, an implosion on Nashville that rivals what Colorado started out the year last year. Yeah. I mean, in hey. the words of JP from Angels in the Outfield, it could happen. If, you know, things don't click for that team, a lot of new yeah. faces there. If it doesn't work out, maybe maybe they just sneak in. But I, I kind of feel like things will work out over there. They'll be just fine. So, all right. That will wrap it up today, everybody. Uh, so thank you for tuning in and making this your first listen of the day today and every day. We'll be back on uh, Monday to discuss anything else that – has happened with the Avalanche or this Miko contract extension. We keep saying that, but maybe, hey, we can keep <laughs> get, saying it. Get Altitude Plus, we could sign Miko. Yeah, right yeah. pay that $20 a month so we have money to pay Miko. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll be talking about this uh, game Friday night. As well. When's the next game after that? Great question. Uh, I don't know when it is, but let's see. I don't think uh, there's much of a break after that. Uh, I think it's like Monday or Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. Sunday. Sunday. Hmm? Sunday, yeah, Sunday, Sunday. Wow, so we got two games to talk about. Uh, they're playing. They're playing Utah. So we'll have two games to talk about on Monday. So uh, that'll wrap it up. Enjoy the weekend, everybody. And uh, like I said, thank you for tuning in and making it your first listen of the day. He is Mister Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. I am Chris Maselli. This is the Locked On Avalanche Podcast. And you guys just made it through another day. Where Sidney Crosby is closer to being in that Colorado Avalanche. <laughs>